In this video, we're going to be going over some of the differences and uh, choices that you have of creating with the line in this, in really software in general, uh, versus traditional and kind of a mix of both. Uh, so first off, most of the things you're going to want to make a line with are in pens and pencils. Not all, there's going to be little brushes here and there that are kind of hidden, and, uh, but most of the obvious ones that are in here. This is the one I typically use as the 2B pencil. It has a nice buildup. Um, and there are some other ones in here too that you know you can feel free to select from and experiment with. Everybody has a different kind of feel and approach. So again, I recommend you kind of check all these out. And um, in the end, we're just making lines. So uh, choose one and don't stress it too much. It's like I was saying, it's just a line. And this one, like I said, has a nice buildup. So even if I have a nice color here, it's still gonna build up dark even up to black. And I kind of like that, it feels organic. Uh, the other thing is is that you can choose how much grain that you have in some of these brushes. Not all of them have grain, the ink ones don't, um, but this one does. And I can either take this brush and work kind of freehand like this. We're just gonna do a sphere for this tutorial. You know, you can understand a little easier without having to get too worked up in kind of what theories I'm doing or all right, so kind of got a little overworked sphere here, and that was one way to make the line, okay? The other way is that I can come up here to my to my so these two selections here, and one of them is the freehand stroke, like I just explained, and the other one is a straight line stroke. And if you select that, what you can do is make these kind of sticky points that go from one point to the other. And although I'm adding this over my drawing, uh, you can do this without. Uh, this can be kind of fun actually. Um, it seems like kind of just an odd tool, but you can actually stylize. You know, if you're doing a cup, for example, oh, and if you want to reset it, you gotta go back here and then hit it again. If you want to do like a cup, you know, in fact, I think I just did a coffee cup the other day. It was kind of like this. You know, you can kind of get some cool, interesting, you know, simplifications with this that I actually like to practice before painting because what happens is is that I'm simplifying my form before that I am um, adding complex lighting and it just kind of helps me with my planes and uh, can be pretty useful actually. So keep that in mind when selecting these. Uh, or again, I can use this. Uh, another tool that we have as far as lines is we have a perspective grid over here. And this can be really amazing to use if you're coming up with you know, environmental concepts or an environment or landscape painting. Um, and you can adjust these nodes to do different things. This one adjusts this and this. You can kind of play around with how that these work, uh, what opacity it is, the, the excuse me, the, the vanishing point down here. Um, then as I use my line, unless that I turn these perspective guide strokes off, which I can do and the perspective grids are still there it's going to be locked to those grids. So this is this can be pretty useful in creating buildings or maybe the underlying drawing to your building so it doesn't look so mechanical. Um, and this can be pretty useful when creating concepts. And what I like to do personally is I like to turn this perspective guide off. And again, this is just me. And I like to have this you know in my in my area just as a visualizer so that as I'm for example if I'm drawing some people down here on a street I've kind of already got a you know a visual of uh, you know maybe some people are around a car you know and they're trying to fix it maybe they're getting in its way uh, they've got some wheels down here excuse this very poor drawing of a car here um, this kind of helps me it guides me to have a sense of depth in my work. And uh, then you can also, you know, study up on line weight and other techniques that might help you whether you're using digital or not. Uh, I hope this helped you figure out maybe how that you can start with a line. And again, the better you're drawing, you know, unless you don't like to use line. Uh, and if, by the way, if you come up here to the perspective guide, you can turn this back off. Um, as I was uh, unless you don't like to use line, the better your drawing, the better your painting is going to be afterwards too. So, you know, if I have this, you know, not just a sphere, but if it's like a, 
Quidditch ball from the Harry Potter series. And if I draw this really, really well, you know, uh, it's got all the, I don't remember what it looks like, mechanical pieces, and it's got the wings, you know. Um, I can I can make this very well drawn. And then what it's going to do is it's going to help me in my painting, which we're going to go on to in a minute. Um, since I started with the sphere, I'm going to draw my sphere. And uh, we'll go on to the uh, paint in the next video. Thank you.